Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. On Instacart, I can shop a huge selection of pet supplies. From that one brush that scratches him just right. To that extra comfy bed he can't wait to flop down in. And I get everything delivered right to my door in as fast as one hour. Okay, 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 settle down. I know it's here. Yeah, it's very exciting. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get a free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Instacart. Add life to cart. Hello and welcome to The Paddock in the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. So the journey is part of the the experience of the Birdsville races. and It's the journey, as Gary Brook, the Birdsville Race Club Vice President, says. And our Road to Birdsville podcast begins with two locals, Don Rowlands, a counsellor, and Donald Dodd, a contractor. Don Rowlands has probably the longest memory of anyone who has been to Birdsville races. My first memory of, of the Birdsville races is back in about 1957 when me and my family, you know, an Aboriginal family, uh, and because we didn't have cars and the uh, racetrack was, uh, you know, 10 miles out of town to, to the west. And uh, the only way we could get there was to go down to the pub and hang around there till the publican who was taking out a load of beer and other uh, alcoholic beverages for the meeting and he let us all get on the back of his blitz buggy truck and i remember going out and the old people they've already had a couple and they were fighting among themselves and we were all worried about get chucked off you know thrown off the back of the truck but my that was my first memory of uh, attending a bird races way back in 1957 it must have changed a lot since then yes and i think the 1957 I'll stand corrected. It was probably the last race on that western side of Birdsville, and they moved to the, uh, you know, now on the eastern side, and uh, they shut it down for a few years, and it restarted again in 1966. And I was pretty involved with, with you know, that getting the, getting it all ready. You must be one of the uh, have some of the longest memories of the race going back to 1957. I think I would be, yeah, and I know, I remember going to it, and I remember the old people having a bit of a barney on the back of the truck, and there was no sides on it, but uh, we got there, okay, and, and you know, because they joined in the, joined in the, uh, the partying, and it was, it was the same thing coming back, but us kids, we, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we were brought up to be uh, able to deal with situations such as that, and just it was part of our life back then, so it didn't bother us too much. So, Donald, how big is Birdsville? What's the population? Uh, Birds will probably be about 100, uh, 120 maybe, if that. And what, um, what's in Birdsville? Oh, we got a um, um, hotel, a uh, couple shops and a post office and that, a uh, caravan park, they got an um, info info centre, uh, school and school and that there. But it's pretty small. It's it's pretty small, yeah. But um, when they have their shows and that, she, she expands. <laughs> what does Birdsville races mean to Birdsville? Well, it means a lot. It's been it's been going on going now for for a fair while. Um, yeah, it means a lot. Um, also for the town and that there. Get a um, get a heap of people get a heap of people around something different, you know, each year. So it's, it's how, good. And how much are you looking forward to the Birdsville races on the 
2nd and 3rd of September. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, mate. It, it'd be a good day to go out and um, enjoy a good day. Hopefully it's good weather. It's um, good weather. Hopefully the wind's not not blowing too much. So, so yeah, no, I'm looking forward to take the family out there and have a good family day at the races and, um, yeah, looking to see a lot of, a lot of faces. <laughs> and what's it like to be there on race day? Oh, it's busy. It's fairly busy. It's good, um, especially being at the racetrack. It's um, it's good fun. It's you don't get to see it, see it every day. But um, coming out here and watching the horses gallop around on a dirt track, um, uh, it's good fun. Good fun. Um, and people that haven't seen it before travel out to see it. It's um, yeah, it's it's good for them as well. You know, it must be odd to see so many people in Birdsville because cre- you know we're getting thousands of people as opposed to just over a hundred. Yeah, that's right. You know, from a hundred to to a few thousand, it's it's unreal. Like the amount of amount of people you see around the town to compared to seeing you know one or two people walking around the streets. If that, you mightn't even see anybody some days. <laughs> Every year at the beginning of September, Birdsville becomes a buzzing town in outback Queensland. It's a long way from anywhere, but a great place to be. Gareth Davis hails from Bridge End, South Wales, and moved to Australia 40 years ago, chasing waves. He's a mad keen surfer and, of course, likes rugby. This is his story. So, Gareth, how far are you away from Birdsville and what was the inspiration to go to Birdsville races? So, I'm 1751750 kilometres. Um, from Birdsville, that's Aladala to Birdsville. But that's the information by Google Maps. Uh, the inspiration is it caught my attention 30 years ago, and um, as perhaps people in the UK wouldn't appreciate, but this is on Australia's 100 um, top bucket list items. Um, it's iconic, Birdsville. I think it's the most remote race meeting in Australia, and You've got to cover hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. Probably, I, I don't know exactly. I haven't really calculated, but it must be about 600 of kilometers of dirt from, from Quilpie to get to Birdsville. And um, it's an incredible party. There's a lot that goes on there. Um, apart from the racing, there's entertainment, there's dancing, there's music. There's the famous Fred Brophy's boxing tent, which is unique in its... Um, uh, on right and and yeah every look you've only got to speak to somebody that's been there or somebody that knows someone that's been there and it's just a once a once in a lifetime when did you decide in 2022 that you were going to to make the journey to birdsville we well, look as everybody around the world has had the same kind of problems um covid had cause chaos with travel plans and organizing holidays and even work you know businesses has been infected you've got the same problem in the uk shortages of staff etc etc so i actually went up the udna data track in in april may which was um a, a 25 day uh, journey which I, which i organized and people couldn't come and had to cry off even my wife had to leave early and fly home because we run a business and, and, and there were business problems um, with staff. So I said, hey, let's, look, this has all gone pear shaped. Let's go to Birdsville. And everybody said, yeah, yeah, let's go to Birdsville. And of course, what's happened is the same people that were coming on the last trip still got business problems. I've had to pull out. My wife has had to pull out. I won't go into that. But again, it's, it's business and staff related uh, due to COVID and, and staff shortages. And I thought, I've waited 30 years to do this. I'm going. So I'm actually going solo. I'm meeting a guy from Aladala who's coming down from the Northern Territory, but I'm going solo. And, and cleverly, towns on the way to Birdsville organize events. So in Quilpy, there's a street party on Tuesday night. And then in Windora, they have the famous Yabby races on the Wednesday night. And then I'll arrive in um, Birdsville on the Thursday to participate in, in the race weekend. Yeah, and I'm speaking to you here on uh, Friday afternoon, your time in Australia, the 26th of August. And uh, how far have you travelled already to uh, on the way to Birdsville? Well, I actually leave at six six 
o'clock tomorrow morning, which is the 27th, Sunday the 27th. Um, I'm taking um, five days, five driving days to get there. So, you know, the, it's not just about getting to Birdsville, um, but it's about enjoying all the scenery and the wildlife and, and, and the unique towns you go through and their hospitality. And, um, yeah, look, I think the most important part of any any travel, any trip is the journey. Um, often the journey is, is as exciting as getting to the destination. So I always, um, I, I love the planning, the preparation, planning the logistics, how I'm going to do things. I mean, obviously for Outback Travel in Australia, I've got a, a, a fully uh, tricked up four-wheel drive, so to speak. Um, and I'm also a member of the Land Cruiser Club. So I have experience in, in uh, remote travel, four-wheel drive travel, Outback Travel. And uh, you, yeah, you can't take on these trips lightly. A car needs to be well prepared. Um, driving on dirt, on corrugations in the outback with um, big road trains and wildlife, um, it's not to be taken lightly. And then if things go pear-shaped, you need to know how to fix punctures and how to recover yourself and use recovery gear and help others, etc. Yeah, I don't think I'd be very good at all those sort of things, uh, uh, Gareth. How comfortable are you about... Um... Uh, the being on your own in the evenings. Well, well, you, the idea is you don't drive after um, after dark because there are too many problems with with, with wildlife. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about the trip itself um, as, as uh, traveling solo, but also quietly confident as well. But um, yeah, look, it, it it's more of um, an extreme. Uh, type of travel you know you're not you're not driving up the m1 or down the m4 oh they, they can they can they can have their their challenges going up the m1 and the m4 uh, but not quite not quite the same one <laughs> different um, different kind of challenges yeah sure yeah so when are you planning to get to birdsville because racing there starts on friday september the 2nd yeah i i plan to arrive there on thursday um i'm not actually attending racing on my way to uh, Birdsville, but I will attend the race meeting in Birds. I've got tickets to the track on the um, Saturday, so very much looking forward to that. I'm not really a punter or a gambler, but I love live horse racing. I've experienced it a couple of times, and they have, I'm sure you'd be aware, Stephen, they have picnic races here and country race meetings, which are uh, really good fun. Um, not top-level racing, but it's just the atmosphere and, and the crack and the frivolity and, and uh, you know, they're, they're, these are lesser-known jo- jockeys trying to make their way and, and it's a whole heap of fun. And when you get to Bursville, what, sh- what accommodation have you got arranged at the track? Uh, I'm in a tent. I, 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 I'm uh, in a, a, a little two-man tent. Um, they um, have an area called the Common where people um, just set up and you can have campfires and people will be in caravans and swags and camper trailers and little tents like me. And I dare say there'll be a few um, so inebriated they'll be sleeping out in the open also. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll have a great time. You must really be looking forward to uh, to actually getting there. But as you say, the journey is, so everyone keeps saying that, is part of Birdsville races. Yeah, a big part of it. You know, you're going, you're going to remote outback. Um, you're going to the edge of the Simpson Desert. Um, yeah, it, it is just absolutely unique. I, you know, after I did, I did my first, believe it or not, I did my first true outback trip in 2018. Now, they say <clears throat> the outback is a place in the heart, but I think sort of topographically, if you like. It's it's where the red dirt starts and the red dust is incredible. It's like talcum powder and it just it it's when you experience it for the first time and it grabs you, you you'll just keep going back, you'll keep going back forever and, and, and the contrast of the red dust against uh, green foliage and, and bomber blue skies and parrots and budgery gars uh, it, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Well, have a fantastic uh, trip to Birdsville. Enjoy the racing, uh, Gareth. Hopefully you might even meet up with another fellow Welshman out there. You never know. They well, get everywhere. You, you, you never know. I, I, people come from 
from everywhere. And, and that's the thing they say about the Virgil races is that the, uh, the friendship and, 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 you know, I won't be on my own. I mean, I'm meeting a friend anyway, but everybody is, is very social and friendly and, and it'll be, um, it'll be, uh, um, a lot of fun. For photographer and videographer Sharon Lee Chapman, the summer of 2022 will be her sixth trip to the outback town. Sharon lives on the Gold Coast, 1800 kilometers from Birdsville. The journey, the the things that happen along the way that you can't anticipate. Um, I was there in 2016 when the floods hit. So the whole town was inundated with water. Um, You were cut off. So if you made it to town, you couldn't get out. So that was um, that was a bit interesting. But the pub didn't run out of beer, so that was the main thing that people were worried about. <laughs> How much are you looking forward to going to the Birdsville races, Sharon? It's just the highlight of my year. It's uh, just something that I look forward to every year. We count down the days, and the last two years has been obviously. We thought we might be going last year, but then it got cancelled again quite late in the proceedings. So uh, it's been a long time between uh, drinks at the Birdsville pub. Why do you do it? I just think, um, look, from an adventure point of view, it, there is nothing like it. But also from a photography point of view, uh, there's so many completely iconic elements as a photographer, uh, for example, I don't know anywhere else in the world that you can go up in a helicopter and I'm talking a muster helicopter so you've got no doors and you can literally hang out of the helicopter during the races and follow the field around from the starting gate to the finish line in a helicopter photographing and that in itself and, you know, there's like 60, 70 kilometre winds and the helicopter's banking left and right and you try not to fall out and you're too scared to check your seatbelt in case you actually accidentally undo it but it's that moment of sort of a little bit of fear because you are in a you know a helicopter that's that's going at speed quite low um but there's just so many amazing elements the dust you know you just don't know what you're going to get there and it's I think from a photography point of view it's one of those race meetings that I map out okay race one this is where I'm going to shoot and I have a vision in my head of you know, what sort of images I want rather than just, you know, when you're at a normal race meeting, you're very much stuck at the finish line because you the story is the, you know, is the winner. But at Birdsville, you know, the story is the horses coming out of the gates with the dust flying or them coming around the home turn and there's so much more to it. So I think from a photography point of view, it's it's photography heaven to to go out there, you know, in that beautiful sort of desert light and, it's it's really amazing. And what about the journey and the accommodation and all those sort of things? Well, um, I've gone, had all different types of accommodation. My first year I was in a tent, which, uh, so they have this thing called Tent City, basically, that um, it's a hire company that, that comes in and just puts up tents and you can just come into Bursal and just your tent's already put up for you. You don't have to worry. But that was my first year which was a real challenge keeping your, your gear safe and because there's a lot of dust obviously that gets into your cameras and trying to charge things from a, from a tent was, was a challenge. And then I sort of moved up to Birdsville providing me some um, accommodation that they kind of have a little bit of a media centre. But this year I've bought a motorhome and we're going to attempt it um, on the rough roads in a Toyota Coaster converted motorhome with a flat towing a little Suzuki Vitara four-wheel drive so that's going to be uh, a little bit of a different challenge this year we're going to just go on bush camp so we'll have no power or anything we're fully off grid we've got solar and everything so it'll be quite a different experience um, doing it this year and you're taking some puppies with you as well aren't you Uh, two Jack Russell uh, puppies very naughty puppies well, they'll keep you busy, won't they? They will. <laughs> and what's it like on race day? You've told me about, you know, as a photographer, but actually as a, as a spectator. Uh, look, 
there's some there's some elements of me that would just love to to be a spectator and just watch it all but uh there's so much going on that you want to capture and remember and and all of that so I think as a photographer you you're trying to be a bit of a spectator and take it all in but you also got to capture those moments as well um that's why this year I've sort of added in a bit more video element uh to what we're doing so that we can you know look back on these amazing experiences we have there and who knows what we'll find along the way well i hope you have a fantastic time and uh and you don't get too well i say don't get too dusty but everyone gets too dusty don't they yeah it's part of the it's part of the adventure my two favorite carnivals in the world is birdsville and cheltenham oh right you couldn't get more different could you (laughs) cheltenham in the freezing cold like winter raining jumps to desert covered in flies hot it's definitely different to Cheltenham, Sharon. I wonder how her two Jack Russell puppies get on. We will find out later in this podcast. Meanwhile, Andrew Redston has used the trip to Birdsville to recharge his batteries. I spoke to Andrew soon after he had arrived in Birdsville. Looking for a fun way to win 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash play100 and use code play100. That's code play100 at prizepicks.com slash play100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Why did you decide to make the journey to Birdsville? Well, I mean, as I said, I've been wanting to come up to the races for a long, long time. It's just one of these bucket list things that you need to tick off. Um, and I needed to get away from where I was for, for the for the time, given that my wife had just passed and I just wanted to get out and uh, refresh, recharge the batteries. So that's pretty much what, what we've done. Races was a good idea to get up here and, and carry on. I don't mind a beer with the lads. <laughs> it's a bit early at the moment, but wouldn't put it past us. Um, so just wanted to get to the races, have some fun. I've done about 8,000 K so far. 8,000? About that, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it'd be pretty close to it. Um, so we, I, I hugged the close coastline a little bit on the way through and then went then went inland. So I went from beach to bush to to, to the desert, I suppose, in, in one sense. Um, went up through to Ayers Rock, Kings Canyon. West McDonald Ranges, um, up through to the Devil's Marbles, Tanner Creek Way, across to Mount Isa, and then down to Winton, Longreach, Windora, and now we're in Birdsville. So you've taken the, the, the very much the scenic route from where you live in uh, Victoria then? Um, yeah, pretty much. There was lots of, I really didn't have too, much, too many destinations planned, with, with the exception to um, Uluru and, and here. The rest of it sort of just driven around took the swag off the roof and went into a caravan park and, and started to have, have a chat with a few people. What's the experience been like um, travelling um, that far on your own? There's lots of people out here that are doing it. I'm not the, I'm not the only one. There's, there's young couples, there's single people, there's old people, um, all sorts of ages, demographics from all over the place that are nomadic. They jump in their car and they're doing exactly the same thing. Watching Dave eat, eat sausages and and eggs I've just cooked him for breakfast. He was from the UK. You know? He's travelling around on his own, left the girlfriend at home. He's come out and have a few froffies with the lads. The people you've met on the way are not all heading towards Birdsville, though. Yeah, we're sitting around camp now having brekkie and a coffee. No, but the people... Not everyone. No, people you've yeah, met on the way. Coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not everybody's on the way. Um, it's coming here. There's some that have packed up this morning and have left. They want to get out before the party starts. It's going to get too busy. Um, everyone got their own destination to, to go around the place. 
Yeah, mine, no, mine's been a, a journey, I suppose, to um, um, rediscover where I'm at, pretty much, from, from a personal point of view. Just given all the crap that I've been through over the last five or six years with, with my wife and so forth, and her passing away. So this is a recharge of the batteries for me and, and then go home refreshed and start again, I guess. Do you think that that the journey is, has and is continuing to help you in, in that regard? Because it must it sounds like you've had a difficult time over the last few years. Journey certainly has helped, yeah. I feel like I'm fifty seven, I feel like I'm thirty again. This is it's just been awesome to come out here and do do all this sort of stuff. It's something I've never done before, but it's certainly some something I'll, I'll do again in the future. It's it's been great. I mean, these distances are so, are so vast for for us here in the UK. On the journey, have you met some of the Birdsville roadies on the way with their stickers on the vans and their cars? Yeah, like, as as we got closer, um, you could start to see all the stickers on the cars and. Everyone has a bit of a, a toot in the car and, you know, if they've stopped at a server or a truck stop to have a coffee or whatever, everybody just goes up and says good day because we're all going to the same destination. Not everybody's got stickers on their cars, but um, you know, there's, there's people with, um, you know, they're coming in teams and they dress up in their in their little git, you know, uniforms and what have you, just, just for a bit of fun. Um uh, it's, it's a good way to, to identify someone coming to the races with the, with the roadie stickers, so it's a good idea. And you've now arrived in Birdsville. It's Monday morning in in Birdsville as, as I'm talking to you. What's the atmosphere like there now and how many people are there in Birdsville? Well, we're in a – I'm in the caravan park. Um, it's I, I got here a few days early for um, to, just to make sure I got set up and everything like that and get fuel. Over the next couple of days – this place will be will be full. So probably around Wednesday, it'll um it'll start to fill up. It's lots of vacant spots at the moment, and you got the town common, which is just um another camping area just down the road. So that was starting to fill up yesterday as well. But I, I'm not sure that I'm not sure how many people are going to get there. They're estimating five seven thousand. So that's that's a significant number for a, for a tiny town. It certainly is a town that's got a population of. Verging on about a hundred. How much are you looking forward, Andrew, to the races? Pretty much. Like I said, it's a, a bucket thing for me to tick off, and I I'm really looking forward to it. We're four days out. I think it's, races start on Friday and the cups on Saturday. Um, just getting here and the, the whole atmosphere is is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited, like a kid um, before before Christmas. That's how well, it's, I am. it's a long way to go to the races, uh, 8,000 uh, kilometres. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic two days at the races and the build-up to the races. And then you've got the journey journey back as well. Yeah, it'll take me about uh, – I'm going to take about a week to get home. If I if I drove straight, I'd, I'd be home in two and a half, three days. But um, it's not what I want to do. But once I leave here, I've always wanted to drive the Birchville track. So I'll do that on the way out. Uh, which is about 500 odd k's, and I'll stay in Maree for the night, and I might work my way down to Broken Hill or Mildura, Echuca, and then uh, then I'll be home the following weekend. So all, all in total, I'll be six and a half weeks away, just travelling around. It's pretty cool. I would run into a bloke, the you know, Fred Brophy last night, the boxing man, the one that does the roaming boxing tent. Always wanted to meet him as well. He we was sitting there having a beer in the pub, and he walks up and sits with us and. You can't buy that stuff, you know. It was just selling some stories and um, got, got some photos, all that sort of stuff. It was great. It was good, you know. So they're, they're, they're experiences that you take away. Um, and I'm glad I met him. You know, it's just another bloke, but it's good, it was good to meet him. Well, thank you very much. I, I hope that um, the journey and the races, journey there and the journey back, is a great help to you. It sounds like it... Um, is an experience you've uh, wanted to do for a long time and uh, hoping it's um, helping you after a difficult period in your life. Yeah, yeah I think it is, Steve. It, it, um, I feel, I'm feel i feeling refreshed even when I, if I wake up and hang out the next morning. It's, you still wake up with a smile on your face. You know, and I'll go home and I'll, I'll dust myself off and um, get up and have another go. I'll be back up here another day. I'll, I'll certainly come back. 
you know, I need to go home and go back to work and see my family, pat, pat my dog, and then uh, get back to work, you know. But and you do know, you everyone like needs a break. And do you like oh, the races? Them. You do like the yeah, races? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The atmosphere you got, we went to the Batuta races the other day. That was a sensational day. Tony, the bookie, he, he, he lost his shirt. <laughs> Given his money away, he was. So he's not a bad bookie. He's here having a coffee with us now. That was Phil. Um, races are good. Good for the soul. As long as there's a racetrack and some beer and a, you know, a few titties hanging around, it, everyone's happy. Well, enjoy your breakfast and I hope you back the winner in the cup. Yeah, no worries. My thoughts are with Andrew, who I know is already having a great time in Birdsville and met up with cup winning jockey Brooke Richardson, who features in part three, episode 150 of The Paddock and the Pavilion. Sharon has now arrived in Birdsville. Let's find out about her journey and how her two Jack Russells have behaved on the trip? Uh, the puppies were very good, but we did have a bit of a misadventure. On day one, we uh, got a rock um, that went into the windscreen, caused a bit of a chip, which ordinarily wouldn't be a problem because you just, you know, get it fixed then and there. But seeing we were in the middle of nowhere, we had a choice of going 50 k's back the opposite direction or 140 k's forward which we decided to do and then we were pretty much just watching the crack get bigger and bigger so we were told that we'd need a windscreen replacement which would take 12 days to arrive um, because we were so remote so um, Mark my lovely partner got on YouTube and found a quick fix for a windscreen which involved uh, drilling with a glass um, drill bit um, through the windscreen where the ends of the cracks were to stop it and doing a windscreen repair on the rest. So uh, we managed to get here without the windscreen cracking any further. Oh, so he's got another so, job now. He can be a winds- uh, windscreen repairer. I think so. I think so. So, yeah, we had a few moments where we thought we were going to be derailed on on day one, which would have been a bit uh, horrible to have to go back to Gold Coast without having made it here, but, yeah, onwards and upwards. We've had a few near misses with uh, kangaroos. Uh, the puppies went crazy when they saw kangaroos hopping across the road in front of us. So uh, that was that was a bit of a challenge, but we made it after four days on the road, 2,100 the, kilometres. What were the nights like? Uh, one night was really, really cold, freezing. Um, and the puppies stole most of the doona, so um, Mar- Mark and I were so cold, we were fighting over one of the puppies for warmth. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's been pretty good. Nice nice sunsets. Lots of flies uh, in Burzville, but it's pretty good. The weather's good, probably 25, 26. And have you seen any of the Birdsville roadies on the way? Um, we've seen a few of them. I went sort of hunting for some today, so I managed to, to see a few, but we didn't really see any on the way because we went a slightly different route, a longer route to avoid the dirt. Um, we only had about 40, 50 k's of dirt rather than 400 if we had gone the other way, but it was 500 k's longer trip doing it the way we did. So after four days, you're now in Birdsville and, and all set up for the races on Friday? Uh, yep, we did a morning of track work. Uh, we've gone out to Big Red, which is the big sand dunes. Um, we went out there this morning and, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun out there and track work again in the morning and Thursday, try and uh, capture some people. The town is very slowly filling up, but I think after tomorrow it will fill up a bit more now that road's reopened. So, uh, yeah, they're expecting six or 7,000 probably. Well, thanks very much for joining me and uh, have a fantastic uh, two days uh, racing. Thank you very much. And um, By the way, what's the names, of the, the names of these two puppies? We must get them mentioned on the, on the podcast as oh, well. Oh, yes, they've got their own Instagram page. Um, Kenny and Kerbin. 
their own Instagram page. Yeah, oh, they've got many followers. So no, not yet, but maybe your show can help get some followers for Kenny and Kerbin. Well, let's try anyway. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay, thanks. Sounds like an exciting journey for Sharon, Mark, Kenny, and Kerbin. Thanks to everyone who has made this podcast possible. Gary Brook, Don Rowlands, Donald Dodd, Gareth Davis, Sharon Lee Chapman, and Andrew Redston. Not forgetting Kenny and Kerbin. Our final word goes to Councillor Don Rowlands to find out what Birdsville Races means to the town. And what does what does the Birdsville Race Meeting mean to the community of Birdsville and financially as well? I think what the Birdsville Races mean to the people of Birdsville and surrounding districts is it's time for us all to come together and uh, have a catch up, have a few beers. Although that's a lot harder today with uh, you know our uh, crowd numbers from three hundred, four hundred to now you know the five or six thousand. So. Uh, we have to meet uptown and have our own little, you know, catch up and a few drinks. But, yeah, it's a good thing for Bersel financially, you know, economically. All the businesses do well. And I think it's things like the Bersel races and other other events that this town successfully, you know, gets to, gets going every year, which helps the Bersel uh, township and all the, all the other towns leading to it. And as a, and as a working councillor, you must look forward to the the two days racing. Well, the the period before the racing and the two days racing very much. Yeah, as a councillor and part of the Diamantina Shire Council, uh, myself and my colleagues, including the mayor, we have we've got to uh, have a look at uh, you know make sure that all the camps are ready. You know, the tracks have been graded so that people have have a track to follow to find a camp and. Uh, and uh, you know, put up the welcome signs and and start spruiking, you know, on the radios about the upcoming event, which is the I think it's the hundred fortieth year this year. So I am and my wife and I we're both life members, so we we you know love the love the racing because being a life member means a lot to us. Thank you for listening to the Paddock and the Pavilion. You can download the show on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, SoundCloud. Stitcher and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at the Pad and Pad. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Sports Social Podcast Network. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players. Pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com/get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.